discrimination and abuse of asexuals is very prevalent. The difference between aphobia and homophobia is that aphobia presents itself in a much less obvious way and in a way that is seen as socially acceptable. This is not okay as not only is it damaging to the confidence and self-esteem of asexual people, it prevents many from coming out, leading to less visibility and the misconception that it is a much smaller orientation than it actually is. After watching this, you will probably realise that you have possibly behaved or made comments of an aphobic nature, but that's okay if you didn't know better. Now you do. Calling someone asexual celibate or commenting on their decision not to engage in relationships even if it's meant in a complimentary way. Celibacy is a choice. Not being in a relationship is a choice. Asexuality is not a choice. We have no control over it and many struggle with deeply wishing they could. Oh, but you're so sexy. You're too attractive to be asexual. What a waste. This is so offensive on so many levels. Assuming that we keep ourselves well simply to be the object of sexual desire. It is objectifying us to the point if we cannot be taken in some sexual way, then we are a waste of space. You just haven't met the right person. If you did, you would definitely feel different. Nope, we wouldn't, because many of us have found plenty of people we find aesthetically attractive or connected with on an emotional level, but we still don't desire sex as part of that relationship. Demisexuals can feel attraction after an emotional connection has been formed. I'll help you meet someone and get laid, or the assumption that asexuals have never had sex, therefore you can't have an aversion to something you haven't tried. Again, nope. We don't need help to get laid, and getting laid, no matter how skilled a partner in the art of pleasure, it won't turn us. This is the equivalent of conversion therapy, or suggesting that if a gay person just slept with someone of the opposite gender, they would change their mind about same-sex attraction. Coercing someone to try sex with a view to curing them has a name. It's called corrective rape. Asexuals who have had sex are still asexual because they will have done so for different reasons than sexual attraction. For example, to keep a partner happy, to experiment, to fulfill their sex drive, which is different to sexual attraction. It's biological and to do with hormones. Watch my other video, is asexuality and orientation, if you need to get your head round that. It's due to being abused as a child or your upbringing. It's a mental health condition or you're frigid. So, some asexuals could have been the victim of abuse, like victims of any other orientation, but asexuality is not the result of that. Many people had strict upbringings, but they are not all asexual. No matter how much therapy someone asexual receives, it doesn't change their sexuality. While those who have suffered abuse or certain kinds of upbringings can work through it with therapy and have a good relationship with sex, asexuals are not narrow-minded when it comes to sex. They just don't desire it themselves. We can't and don't need to be fixed. We are who we are. Is it so far a stretch to believe in a world where gay, lesbian, trans, gender fluid and gender neutral are all accepted, especially in the LGBT community, that having no sexual attraction is beyond possibility and therefore be a choice or mental illness, but the others are not? Come on now. Younger people may be told they will grow out of it when they get older. Would you tell a gay person that? Again, it's feeding into this observation that asexuality is abnormal instead of embracing it under the umbrella. Asexuals are attention seekers. Why anyone would think this is beyond me because the only attention you get is people telling you there's something wrong with you, they can help change you, or that you don't even exist. Assuming that asexual people are incapable of love, having a relationship and do not want kids. As with anyone outside the stereotypical heterosexual type relationship, being asexual has no bearing on whether a person wants kids or not. There are many options available nowadays to singles and those in same-sex relationships. Asexual people are completely capable of love and being in a loving relationship. We have been told by men for years that love and sex are not the same thing when it comes to talking their way out of infidelity. But in the context of asexuality, it seems one cannot exist without the other in a romantic relationship if mainstream thought is listened to. And so I rest my case. Are you guilty of any of these offences against asexuals? If so, I hope you've learned something today from this video.